Hello there and welcome to this video. Well, I never thought that I would ever have to do a video justifying the theorem of Pythagoras. But we live in strange times and there are people out there who are starting to say that maybe it's not true. Um, flat earthers, of course, who else? The theorem of Pythagoras is one of the oldest mathematical results known to the human race. Going back maybe two and a half thousand years, it's attributed to Pythagoras. It's possible it was known before him. He's the person who's credited with having proven the result. Uh, so in this video, what I'm going to do is I'll go through an, a quick example on Pythagoras just to make sure that you know what it actually is if you've forgotten it from school and then what I'm going to do is go through um, a nice intuitive geometric proof of the theorem of Pythagoras uh, so let's look at a quick example so in front of you you can see a right angled triangle and you know it's a right angle because I've drawn it on a square grid and this angle here is 90 degrees as a right angle so it's a right angle triangle now we're taking one of the big squares as being a one by one square so this is a length of one two three which you can see is written here this is one two three four and the software is telling us that this is a length of five so the theorem of Pythagoras is a statement about the relationship between the lengths of the sides of a right angle triangle, any right angle triangle. So let's think about what it would tell us about this triangle first of all. Well, um, there are two different ways of thinking about Pythagoras. There's a numerical way of thinking about it and there's a geometric way of thinking about it. And they're equivalent but they're just different ways of thinking about it. And I'm going to look at both of them. So first of all, let's consider numerically, what does the theorem of Pythagoras say about this? Well, it tells you that if you square the lengths of the two shorter sides, add those answers together, you should get the same answer as when you square the length of the longest side, or the hypotenuse as it's called. So the shorter side is three. So we square three, three squared, and we add the length of the middle side squared, 4 squared. And according to Pythagoras, that should equal the length of the longer side squared, 5 squared. So 3 squared plus 4 squared should equal 5 squared. So we're, well, we can check quickly if that's true. So 3 squared is 3 times 3, which is 9. 4 squared is 4 times 4, which is 16. And 5 squared is 5 times 5 which is 25. So 9 plus 16 does indeed equal 25. Well you might object to this point and say well how do you know that that line there is definitely five units long it might just be the software saying that. So I'm going to justify it to you why we say that that why we know that length is that line is definitely five long um, and I'm going to also talk about the geometric way of thinking about this. So the geometric way of thinking about this is thinking of it in terms of areas of squares. So we'll put some extra lines in like this. So the geometric way of thinking of Pythagoras is that Pythagoras tells you if you draw a square onto the side of of the to onto each side of the right angle triangle then the area of the two smaller squares added together should equal the area of the bigger square and we can check if that's true or not so this square here is three by three now to get the area of a square you just square its length that's why we call it squaring because when you square a number you get the area of a square so that's three squared which is nine now we can see indeed that there are nine of these smaller squares inside there one two three four five six seven eight nine 
this has a length of 4, so 4 squared, 16. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So there are 16 of these smaller squares inside this bigger square. So according to Pythagoras, this should have exactly 25 of these squares inside it. Now because it's drawn at an angle, it's not obvious that it does. However, if we rotate it, we can see that yes, this square does indeed have a length of five units, and you can see that there are 25, five squared, 25 of these smaller squares. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. There are 25 of these smaller squares. So we find out that for this three, four, five right angle triangle, if we draw squares onto each side, the areas of the two smaller squares added together does indeed equal the area of the larger square. So whatever way you look at it, Pythagoras works for this right angle triangle. Three squared plus four squared equals five squared. So it's definitely true for a three, four, five triangle. But now we want to have a look at um, how we show that it's true for any triangle. So what I've got here is some right angle triangles and two squares. Now the two squares, as I'll show you, are exactly the same size. You can fit one on top of the other. And all of these triangles are the same size as well. So I'll use this one here to go around and show that you can fit it on top of all of these other triangles, exactly. So we can see that it fits on top of all of them. Fits on that one, fits on that one, and it fits on this one here. Okay, so all these triangles are the same length, and sorry, the exact same size. They've got the same lengths for all three sides, so they've got the same area, they're the same size. They're all the same triangle. So what's the relationship between the triangle and the square? Well. The square has a length that is equal to the two shorter sides added together. Now in this example, I've chosen this triangle to be three by six, and the square has a length of nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now the point of this is that, although, yeah, I've chosen a three by six triangle, you could do this for any triangle at all, and you'll get it to work as long as you use a square that has a length of side that is equal to the two shorter sides added together, you'll get this to work. So this is a general proof that works for any right angled triangle. So what I can do is I can place these triangles inside the red square. Oops. Let the red square on the left, like this. So, part of the red square has been obscured by the blue triangles now, so that all you can see is a smaller red square. Now, the crux to understanding this proof is understanding the following point. I put the blue triangles on top of the red square, which have obscure part of it so you can only see a certain amount of red left. No matter where I put these triangles though, see I put this one in here, 
I've covered up the same amount of area of the large red square. So the amount of red that's left should always have the same area, no matter where I put the blue triangles. So that red area there should be the same as the red square. I could do something else. I could do this. That red area there should have the same area as the red square. So that red area has the same area as that square. As long as all of the triangles are on the square and they're not overlapping each other, then the amount of red left will always have the same area. And that's the key to understanding this proof. So I could arrange these squares like this. If I wanted to. So this red kind of L shape here will have the same area as that square there because the same amount of this, the larger square has been covered by the blue triangles. So the amount left must have the same area. And if you can understand that simple point, then you basically, um, you're going to understand the proof. So in this triangle, on this square, sorry, I'll put these triangles on and arrange them like this. Here we go. Oops. So I hope that you can understand the point here that this red shape here has the exact same area as this red square here. Because all we've done is put the same four right angle triangles onto two different identical red squares. So the amount left must have the same area. That's the point of this proof, or that's the key to understanding how it works. Okay, so we've put on these right angle triangles, which is which are all the same as this one over here on the right. Now, if we give each side a name, Usually we call them A, B, and C. Usually the shortest side we call A, the middle side B, and the longest side we call C. So that means that this side has a length of A units, this has a length of B units, and this has a length of C units. Now if we look at this um, square on the left here, we want to think about what is the area of that square there, okay? Now what I also want to do is, first of all, I want to convince you that it definitely is a square because maybe you'll be looking and think, how do you know that's definitely a square? Well, I can get the this, this software to draw a square there and you can see it does fit exactly on there. That was a square that I got it to draw. So that is definitely a square. And the length of one of its sides is the length of the longer side of one of the triangles, which we'll call C units. So this has a length of C, this is a length of C, this is a length of C, and this has a length of C as well. So all these sides are the same length. So it's a square, and we know that to find the area of a square, you square one of its, light, one of its sides. So that means that this square has an area of C squared. Now, the other one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to split it up into two sections like this. And now this length here is the same as this length here, the shorter side of the triangle. So this has a length of A. So therefore, that square has an area of a squared. The length of one of its sides squared, that gives you the area of that square. 
this side here must have the same length as this side on the triangle because that's just one of those triangles placed there. So that has a length of B. So therefore, this square here has an area of B squared. Now remember that we'd already convinced ourselves that this red shape here must have the same area as this red square here. They must have the same area. So that means that c squared, the length of this, the area of this square equals these two squares, the area of these two squares added together, which is a squared plus b squared. which is the theorem of Pythagoras. That the length of this side squared is the same as the length of the other two sides squared and added together. So we're proving the theorem of Pythagoras. And just to finish off, I can put three, three squares on here, so that this, this is a square A there. So this is a square with an area of C squared, this is a square with an area of A squared, and this with B squared. Okay? And we can show that these squares will just fit on top of the squares over here. Okay? So that one is the same as that one there. And we know that this must have the same area as this. on top of there. Oops. Uh, square. So this one here you can see fits on top of there. So that one is the same as that one. So we know that this square here, the area of it must be the same as of the same area as the area of these two smaller squares added together, which tells us that the length of this side squared is the same as that side squared plus that side squared. C squared equals A squared plus B squared. Okay. The theme of Pythagoras. So this simple geometric argument proves that the theorem of Pythagoras is right and it works for any right-angled triangle.